Hey, I'm Athena. And I'm Tabitha. And I'm Levon. And, and we, we are Cut Close. The 90s saw plenty of great R&B groups, and one of the most promising was Cut Close. Soulful, elegant, talented, and backed by Keith Sweat. Not only were they featured on several of Keith's massive hits like Twisted and Get Up On It, but they moved on from being background singers to landing on the charts with their 1995 song, I Like. Despite their immediate success, they only released one album before they disappeared. And the truth about what happened to Cut Close following their affiliation with Keith is messier than you could even imagine. And we were excited when, when everything was put out and 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 everything just kind of flipped like mm -hmm. three like flipped on us like like what did we do to deserve the uh just to be ignored this mess requires something to munch on so head on over to rrgsnacks.com our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef turkey and bacon jerky buffalo ranch popcorn and butter toffee peanuts Although she was born into a family of 15 children, Tabitha searched for a sense of sisterhood outside of her overprotective upbringing. While working at LaFace Records, she became a fan of TLC and decided to form a girl group of her own. Since her then-boyfriend was connected to several people in the industry, including Babyface and Keith Sweat, Tabitha was able to get the group an audition in front of Keith. During the audition, Keith asked them to sing the song, Get Up On It, and he liked what he heard. Keith was signed to Elektra, and the company gave him the opportunity to sign his own artists to his imprint called Kia Records. He immediately added Cut Close to the roster. Because I went and got my own label, put Silk on the label, Cut Close on the label, mm -hmm. and, and I'd never been in the red. I was, you know, first, you know, my first album did five million. You know. Tabitha told Halftime Chat YouTube channel that they tried to do things the right way. They even got their own lawyer to look over the contract. But they soon realized that everyone in the industry was in bed with each other. So while their lawyer was supposed to work in their best interests, they still got screwed in the end when they signed on for a seven-album deal. We wrote on the album. They were like, all right, go on the right. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to slip a publishing contract inside the recording contract that comes two in one, you know what I'm saying? Which came with us. We had the publishing contract and recording together. And we gave up our publishing for $1. Like who the hell gives an advance for $1? $1, it said it. Tabitha told Halftime Chat, to know that you're screwing somebody is disheartening to me. Get Up On It was featured on Keith's 1994 album of the same name and peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart. The album was eventually certified platinum, which meant Cut Close was exposed to a larger audience. People were starting to take notice of them, and the ladies were ready to do their own thing. Their debut album, entitled Surrender, dropped in 1995. According to the New York Times, their single I Like was a surprise success and became their only top 40 hit, peaking at number 34 on the Billboard chart. While Athena was the lead singer and seemed to be favored by Keith over the others, it wasn't a big deal to Tabitha at first because she understood Athena had a unique singing gift. Two more singles entitled Lovely Thing and Surrender followed. However, the songs didn't perform as well. Some people weren't surprised that the songs weren't dominating the charts. In an article published by the Washington Post, a journalist wrote that while the members had attractive voices, they didn't have a quote, distinctive group sound. The writer also pointed out that since the songs were written by Keith, the lyrics were inauthentic and only served male fantasies. The journalist added, There's something smarmy about powerful industry figures who sign up young women desperate for stardom and who then direct those women to moan and croon. The ladies continued working with Keith and were also featured on his 1996 single, Twisted, which ultimately became his biggest hit, peaking at number one and spending 33 weeks on the charts. But if you notice, the music video doesn't even say featuring Cut Close, although the group members have songwriting credits on the track as well. When it came time for Keith to record his 1996 song, Nobody, Athena was the only group member featured on the track. While Keith's songs rose to the top of the charts, the ladies weren't even making enough money to take care of themselves, and Tabitha began to address her concerns directly with Keith. Like, a home is a necessity. 
Food is a necessity. Cars, really, is a necessity. We signed to a record deal, but we can't work. Like, we're going to get kicked out of our house. Like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? That joker told us to get a job and take Marta, which is the city bus to work. The ladies could have made some money on tour, but Tabitha alleges that Keith only took Athena out with him on the road. And obviously, this led to division and animosity between the group members. The group flew out to New York to work on their second album. They hit the studio to record with Missy Elliott, and that's when things really started to go downhill. The label only wanted to utilize Athena's voice for the verses and the background, and LaVon and Tabitha wondered why they were even there if they weren't going to be singing on the track. Tabitha told our friends over at Halftime Chat that the higher-ups were really trying to shake things up. They wanted the project to be presented as Athena Cage featuring Cut Close. And of course, the other ladies weren't having it. Even Athena was uncomfortable with how much they were trying to push her to the forefront. While listening to the radio one day, Tabitha heard that Cut Close was looking for two new members. Apparently, Keith wanted to replace Tabitha and LaVon, and Athena was in on it to some degree because she started meeting with the replacement singers without Tabitha and LaVon's knowledge. The song with Missy was never released, and Cut Close never completed their second album. Athena signed on as a solo artist with Priority Records. Her single entitled Hey Hey peaked at number 18. She did see some success with her song All or Nothing, which was featured on the 2001 soundtrack for Save the Last Dance. Because if I was Tabitha in the bond and you go solo, I'd be pissed at you. Seriously. You my, my group member? Like, and, I, and I mean that with all due respect. We came up together and all of a sudden you got a, a solo record coming up. I'll be pissed with you. We, we were not working together anymore. Before I actually started to pursue a solo career, it didn't just pop out, out of the woodworks. But it was clear Athena needed Cut Close just as much as they needed her. The label wasn't happy with how Athena's music was performing, so before her solo album could be released, she was dropped from Priority Records. Athena and LaVon went back to their hometown, while Tabitha stayed in Atlanta. Tabitha confirmed that since they still owed Keith's label six more albums, they weren't able to work on any new projects until their contract expired, which was sometime around 2003. They started families and tried to readjust to living a regular, low-key life. Tabitha told Halftime Chat YouTube channel that working a regular job out in the public was an unpleasant experience. People weren't too kind as they mocked what they perceived to be her fall from grace. Almost 10 years apart, the ladies squashed their issues and reunited as sisters. They shared the stage with Keith a few times, and in 2010, they released the song Let It Ring. Another single entitled Congratulations dropped in 2020. In July 2021, Keith appeared on Versus alongside Bobby Brown. Everyone expected him to bring out Cut Close so they could perform the songs they recorded together. However, Keith didn't invite the ladies to participate in the event. In an interview with the Marty A. Johnson show, Tabitha said they were baffled by Keith's behavior. She added, We could have been represented on that versus. It would have been a huge help for us and would have put us back in the game. They revealed that despite being an important piece of Keith's music catalog and contributing to several of his number one hits, he has shunned them. Why are you not putting y'all on more shows? Well, give me uh, a number. You, 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 wanna, you got his number to ask him that? <laughs> you tell us. And that's when Marty A. Johnson dropped a major bombshell. Marty confirmed that he invited Keith on his show prior to the versus battle. Keith's team did their research beforehand and apparently noticed a March 2020 video Marty had conducted with Cut Close. He agreed to do the show. This is receipts. Don't ask about Cut Close. <laughs> and I got the email. I got receipts. In Bold. <laughs> Seriously. So, so weird. That's so weird, dude. Be sure to subscribe to Marty's channel through the link in our description box, because on June 28th, the ladies will be back on his show to continue telling their story with some information that promises to be even juicier. Okay, so what was Keith's beef with Cut Close? 
The ladies aren't sure, but they threw around several ideas. Maybe Keith doesn't want to perform with them because they're women? Maybe he thinks they need to have more hit songs of their own before they can share the stage with him again? Or perhaps he's embarrassed and keeping his distance because he knows he jacked them for their publishings. Allegedly. Despite everything they've gone through, Tabitha still considers Keith to be their musical father, and she loves him because he gave them a shot. In May 2022, the ladies announced on their Facebook page that they were ready to record their long-awaited second studio album, but they needed some help. They launched a GoFundMe with a goal of $100,000, and as of this video, they have collected a little over $2,600. We've included a link to their campaign in the description box. These days, Cut Close still tours, and their goal is to show the world that they're much more than Keith Sweat's background singers. They are beautiful and talented, and they deserve to be recognized as an important piece of music history. Let us know if you're surprised by what happened to Cut Close, and thanks for watching RRG.